skin, it's in my soul. Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds, back again. And we're talking about some conservation. Got some exciting news. Got my friends Darlene and George, a.k.a. Gorgeous George, on the line here. I believe um, Jar- George has been on the podcast before. Darlene, I believe this is the first time. And correct me if I'm wrong, guys. But we've got some really, really exciting news to share. And before I bring them on, I- I'll kind of give the the 30,000 view, uh, 30, foot view backstory. We're now in our eighth year. We are a for-profit company. Salt Strong is and always will be a for-profit company. But we've always had this urge to, to give back. And, and we have given back a lot of time, a ton of money. And, uh, you know, from the 30,000 redfish we've put in to donating for all the groups from CCA and Capture Clean Water and the list goes on and on. We, we've done a lot. And collectively as a group, now we're, we're celebrating 50,000 members here the end of this year, we, we've done a lot and there's been countless trash cleanups and all this stuff, but it never really felt like it was something that was kind of ours, if you will. Um, and, and so we've talked about it and it just, it never really made sense to do it. And so we kind of tabled the idea. I remember, gosh, it was probably two years ago. I was just, I was ready to do it. And we're going to start a, a second, you know, essentially a company like a nonprofit, and we're going to be able to donate that. And we're going to be able to use our, our members and some, eventually some chapters to do some big things. And it, it just, I didn't, we didn't have the bandwidth and it just never really felt right. And lo and behold, one of our amazing members, Darlene Schumann had approached me and she's like, Hey, you know, it's been on my heart. I've got, got this nonprofit that I already started some time ago. And uh, I'd love to find a way to license the Salt Strong name and turn that into essentially a Salt Strong conservation group or conservation alliance. We've thrown around a few different names. We might just shorten it up to Salt Strong Alliance after it's all said and done. But uh, I, I heard what she said and I was like, well, gosh, man, this, this could be it. Cause we really needed, one, we needed a nonprofit to be able to do this the right way. And we needed someone to run it who had a little bit more bandwidth to actually take the bull by the horns, if you will, and make stuff happen. And uh, the more we talked to Darlene and then she got George involved uh, and a few other members and a few other people that are um, that are lined up to help, it just, it made sense. And so it is now official and we'll be really kicking off the, the year here, 2025, 2025, 2024. I'm thinking way into the future, guys. Uh, we'll be Ooh. kicking off 2024 with really a lot more detail on where we're going with all this and some of the big plans. But I wanted to have the two of them on just to share in some of the excitement, maybe put a couple little teasers out there on some things that are already in the, in the works and ultimately talk about how this is going to impact, you know, salt strong nation and our members and our members communities and local communities. I think in terms of the, the water, you know, cause that's, that's the number one thing that we're going to be attacking here. As you'll hear in a second from Darlene and George in terms of water quality issues, there's countless, obviously in every area, is facing some issues with water, regardless of where you are, if it's Texas or Florida, the Carolinas, Virginia, everyone's facing something. Uh, And so we're gonna be able with not much overhead at all, which is the beauty of this as well, able to really make a dent in many of these communities. So all that being said, Darlene, I'll let you go first here. Welcome to the the show and really pumped uh, to have you as a, is this kind of nonprofit conservation partner here, side by side with Salt Strong? Uh, kind of, kind of give yeah. your your side of the story, if you uh, if you will, and what you're most excited about. Okay, okay. Well, it it kind of really started coming together when we started the chapters, and as I'm chapter president of uh, the Tampa uh, group, and what I noticed, and what we all noticed there was. Um, you know, George, of course, has a part of it, but every, if you're an angler, you're concerned about conservation and preserving our fisheries, and you want to do something for the environment. So, you know, George and I, he's our conservation leader in the chapter, 
we just got to talking about, you know, well, what kind of projects can we do and, you know, what makes sense to do when we participated in some debris cleanups and that kind of thing. And then we said, you know what, we've got all these salt strong insiders that are so passionate about conservation and preserving our fisheries for the future. You know, let's, let's kind of think about doing something, you know, a, a signature project or, you know, that, that we can call our own. Um, and then it, it as I, we kind of started looking into that since I had my nonprofit and, you know, its mission is named for education and conservation type things. You know, you start looking at projects there and how it, the, the nonprofit just adds that whole funding, um, you know, component to it. There's so many open doors for a nonprofit to get funding. And we said, well, why don't Hear that all up. Why don't we bring in our chapters and you know even more chapters if we if we need to eventually? But why don't we pick something in in Tampa? Um, you know, apply the nonprofit to you know see if we can get Salt Strong you know to kind of come in to the mix as a nonprofit. Um, you know, and 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 find something to to link us all together and really make a difference uh, here and, and really be an advocate for some conservation projects here locally and kind of set the example um, maybe for some other uh, chapters to follow along. So that's exactly what we did. You know, we kind of, we, we met and said, said to Joe and Luke, and, you know, let's, let's talk about unifying our, our chapters through conservation and community also. So if it's, you know, community events, like, you know, uh, take veteran fishing or teaching kids to fish, uh, those kind of community events is certainly a part of of all of this too. So um, we wanted to do that, and then we want to position Fall Strong as a coastal conservation leader, and um, and all of this is part of enhancing the membership and the engagement of our of our members of the insiders. You know, since they're passionate, everybody wants to be a part of it. So you know, let's think through well, what can we do you know, with our environmental professionals and partnerships and our captains and guides and insiders, you know, we, we've got a big force here that we can tackle some really big projects. So, and then we've got, you know, how do we, how do we promote the awareness of what we're doing? We certainly want everyone, you know, outside of Salt Strong to know that we're doing and that we're really making a difference. So why don't we use, you know, Salt Strong digital platform to, you know, kind of create our own channel if we need to and, and get the word out that way. So that's where we're headed. Yep. I love that's it. Where we're headed. Yeah. And with, you know, with 50,000 members uh, across the country, but, you know, the, the majority of our members can be found from Texas across the Gulf into Florida up into, you know, really New York now is, is really the, the core uh, of, uh, of our members. But with that many members, we've seen we have such a diverse background of, you know, we have fishing guides, we have people who are working in conservation, we have people like, you know, you that working with the you know, Department of Transportation, and we've got attorneys, and we got all kinds of, of people who are just dying to help. And that was, that was my first question to you. I don't know if you remember, but I was like, all right, uh, I don't want to license our name unless this thing can scale across all of our states. This can't just be a a Tampa chapter thing, or even a Florida chapter thing. This needs to be something that we can really scale and grow and make an impact where all of our members are uh, are part of this, and that this is impacting all kinds of different communities, not just uh, not just some. And and the more we talked about and explored it, it was um, it was kind of a, a no brainer. Uh, George, I'd love to hear your uh, your thoughts on it. Well, I think Darlene has. Uh, spoken so well of how things started and you know she and i talked kind of sparked an idea and of course you and luke darlene and i mark dunham he got together and kind of talked things out quite a bit and that really lit a fire under darlene and i without a doubt <laughs> and uh we've been doing a lot of research uh a lot of digging, figuratively and physically, <laughs> into uh, you know what, what, how we want to direct this conservation efforts. And yes, we've uh, we've got something very 
big that we are researching and planning on, but we'll also have some smaller scale projects and really trying to build up the awareness of not just our members who most are very passionate about cleaner water, improving our fisheries, uh, educating not only fishermen, but, but voters and the public in general who use our waters, that how important it is not to litter, keep our waters clean. What can we do upstream to help keep pollutants out of the water? And these are all things that, that we are looking at. And all these chapters, as we continue to grow, as you stated, every area of the country has pollution problems, dirty water problems, but they all come down to one thing. We need to get involved. We've got the manpower, and we just feel that this salt strong lance can do great and wonderful things. And, and this is not just one shot at a time. It's going to have a cumulative effect all along the coast. And literally, from the tip of the eastern seaboard all the way down to the tip of Texas. And who knows, Californians, we got to way out there, they may start getting involved. So without going too deeply, we, we do have some really, really fantastic ideas coming up. They will be coming out at some of the chapter meetings. I think the feedback from our members is crucial because we don't have all the answers. We don't even have all the questions. So the more people that will get involved, we'll look at each and every suggestion and we'll be making up our game plans. And I think every chapter, even the new ones, are should be excited about the possibilities that are in front of us. Yeah, and one thing that I, I wanted to be sure of before we even went this path is that anything that this salt strong conservation alliance does it's very specific i and i i'm sure you're like me you know there's nothing worse than donated to some cause and it's not specific at all and you never even see any impact uh that will be the opposite with this they will be very specific and i won't share all the things but like one in particular you know darlene has an interesting perspective working with the dot you know Every bridge, right, in, in Florida and really across the country has the same problem. And we, I'm talking about bridges over water, obviously, where a bridge over water, you can imagine it, right? It's over water and you normally have some sort of causeway. And there's usually a little area where you can you, you can envision almost some homeless people, or hopefully maybe not homeless kids fishing down there. But, you know, I'm talking about where it, the bridge kind of dips down. And guess what happens? Anytime there's rain or any kind of big runoff or a massive storm comes through, Everything that's been sitting on that bridge is going in that water one way or the other. It's going either off, just right off the side, depending on how big the, the rain or the wind is, or if there's any little uh, cuts or, or gaps in the bridge, or it's going down that little causeway and running right down into our waterways. And you can only imagine all the oils and gases and all of the, I mean, essentially little pieces of plastic and stuff that come off uh, off of our tires and all the things that are uh, that are left on these roads every day, all day long are going right into our waterways. So one idea was even plant clams uh, down there underneath these uh, these bridges. So very specific projects uh, like that, that uh, that that this whole team will be uh, working on. So I'm I'm really, really excited about it. Like I said, we can't share everything here today. Really just wanted to share the exciting news that we just signed the uh, agreement. And it is uh, it is now official and we'll have a, a whole lot more really starting with these chapters, because that was one of the main purposes of the chapters was, you know, education. And then obviously the fellowship part of it. And the third piece was conservation, uh, just like, you know, BASS, who was uh, at one point, you know, got up to over 500,000 members. And that was a really, really big force for for our lakes, for our freshwater. 
uh, 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 you know, not estuaries, but our, our freshwater lakes and systems, I mean, they ended up suing like 190 different companies, including the U.S. government on multiple occasions, all for the right to have clean water. And I, I believe that we could do some similar things when we all come together and, as I said, have very, very specific goals and projects in mind, not just la-di-da, hey, we, wanna, we want clean water. I mean, it, it starts with you know, specific projects and specific things that we're targeting. So really, really pumped. And George, you've got a little bit of a teaser, right? Don't you uh, have something in your back pocket you're working on? Well, just a little something. We all love fish. Some people are land-based. Some people are yakkers. Some people are little boaters, big boaters. We've got them all. And we've got something coming up that just might make uh, one or two or more of our fishermen extremely happy. Extremely happy. Uh, it might... Uh, I'd be considered maybe a late Christmas present, possibly. <laughs> so all it could be is all those 50,000 members. Keep your ears up like a German shepherd. Come <laughs> to these chapter meetings. And I wanna, I'll say this for the Tampa and the St. Pete chapter members. Be there next Wednesday and Thursday. You've got a surprise coming. Mm -hmm. A really good one. I love it. Well, that's all we can say for now, but it uh, it might have four letters and start with a B and end with a T and rhyme with goat. Um, so I'll just <laughs> leave it at that. That's a distinct possibility, Joe. <laughs> and it floats. <laughs> I love it. Well, cool. Um, yep. Guys, anything else? I've I've got a... Uh, bolt here, but I, I wanted to make sure we shared this exciting news. And uh, like I said, there'll, there'll be a lot more conversation on this and uh, a lot more specific details. I, I, there's only so much we could say here right now as we're getting everything formed and, uh, and, and ready, but um, th there's going to be some really, really exciting news. And as I said, it will be very, very specific. That is going to be one of the promises that if anyone gets involved, whether it's time or money, that it will be very, very specific, the impact that we're making. Uh, Cause I, I think that's one yeah. thing that's, that's always bugged me about a uh, certain groups uh, that, you know, sometimes it's a lot of hot air and I'm not pointing fingers at anyone. It's, it, it is what it is, but I think that's one way we want to make sure that this is different. Uh, and, and two that we're to your point, George, it, this is all about the members. This is not about us. It's not about Salt Strong. This is really about our amazing members. And I know we got a lot of people that are fired up to see an impact and, uh, and they're looking for ways to, to help and to uh, uh, unite and align forces. And uh, ultimately we wanna hear from you. So come to the chapter meetings. That's a great place to raise your voice and to give input. And two, uh, if you can't make it there, make comments in the community. Go to the community.saltstrong.com. Uh, we'll obviously have a blog post that is associated with this podcast and with all future uh, conservation podcasts and leave a comment down at the bottom that comes right to us and we get to read every one of them. We uh, we want input badly. Uh, this is, once again, not our decision, not about us. This is about you guys. So please, please, please uh, be proactive about giving input, good, bad, and different. Outside the box, we'll take it all. <laughs> Cool. Well, Darlene, George, any uh, any anything else? Darlene, ladies first. I, I could talk all day, but let's <laughs> save it for another time. Love it. <laughs> I, I, I'm busting at the seams. I'll tell you, I am busting at the seams. I want to wish everybody out there happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and a happy, healthy New Year to all. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, guys. Love you all, and uh, we will talk to you on the next episode. Stay tuned for more. Cause fishing, it's in my soul.